This is the Kia e Nero, and it's basically like a value pack of batteries because essentially with these electric cars, a lot of the money that you pay for them goes towards their batteries. And while this thing does start from 33,000 pounds, after taking into account a three and a half grand government grant, it's still actually relatively cheap compared to other electric cars like the Tesla Model 3 and Jaguar I-Pace, considering the amount of batteries it actually has on board and the range you can get from it. Now, if you wanna see how much money you can save on a new car, click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen or follow the link below the video to get a car wow. The e Nero may be a very futuristic electric car, but it doesn't look all that futuristic. I mean, the only thing that differentiates it from the normal Nero is look at some blue accents there. He's still got the old same fake vents at the back. Down the side as well, it's pretty much exactly the same. So it's got that whole smallish SUV vibe going on. At the front, you do have some more bluey bits there to just go, hey, look, I am eco-friendly. And some more here, but I'll point this out. The vents at the front do actually lead somewhere. They serve a purpose for aerodynamics. But yeah, generally, it's quite an unassuming looking car, and it's the same, really. Here on the inside as well, I do quite like the interior design. It's simple, it's easy to understand. Quality is generally pretty good. All the major touch points are soft enough. This E Nero does have one difference though over the normal car and it's this center console here with your gear selector, which is a rotating knob. I say gear selector, it's not actually got any gears, it's cars, but it's your forwards, backwards, or put it into neutral. It's all very logically laid out, this cabinet. You've got all your controls there for your infotainment system, those for your climate and stuff, all your door switches and things. You've got some nice gloss trim here, some metal bits on the switches, which do help improve the quality feel. And Kia used to do horrible steering wheels, but this one is actually quite nice, though the central boss is a bit scratchy. Also for a high-tech car, look at this. Got old filament bulbs for the interior lighting, and yes, you have a big sun visor, which is really good to block out the sun. But you actually have to open the vanity mirror and then turn on your little light up there. Once again, a filament bulb, which is a little bit old fashioned. Anyway, let's talk about this car's equipment list. There's only one trim level of E Nero, and it's fully loaded. So you get automatic cruise control with radar to keep you a safe distance from the car in front, and it'll also auto steer to keep you in lane takes the stress and long journeys. You get a full leather interior and eight-way electrical adjustment for the driver's seat. And the front seats and the steering wheel are all heated. There's some JBL speakers for them banging tunes now, innit? There's also front and rear parking sensors, plus a reversing camera. And of course, this eight-inch touchscreen, which includes TomTom -tom satellite navigation. It's also got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The thing is, that's the specification cover. Let's talk about one of the main features of the car, which you're going to be using every day, and that's the infotainment screen. So the screen's a little bit dull, but it's clear, and the menus are logically laid out, and the shortcut buttons mean you can just quickly navigate between different functions very easily while you're driving. The whole system is quite easy to use. The only problem is, is that the satellite navigation doesn't have pinch to zoom. It's really annoying. The voice commands work okay, but you have to use specific phrases. It's quite limited of actually what you can do with it. Still, input Putting a destination into the satellite navigation is easy. However, the buttons can be a little bit laggy and slow to respond. But once you've inputted the destination, the satnav actually calculates the route pretty quickly. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to use my Google Maps on this thing rather than bother with Kia system because there's no way Kia can do mapping quite as good as Google now, is it? That said, this infotainment system is pretty good. But if you want to see the best infotainment system fitted to an electric car, just click up there on the pop-up banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen or follow the link below the video to watch my detailed in-depth review of the Tesla Model 3. Now, let's move on to practicality here in the front of the e Nero, And it's actually pretty good. I've got big door bins. That's a 1.5 litre bottle. That's impressive. I've got a little storage area there for my mobile phone. It's got wireless charging as well, but if you don't have that functionality with your phone, you've got a 12 volt socket there, you've got a USB there, and then another USB which is covered up for some reason. I'm a little bit shy of having two on show. Also, there's a big storage area here. There's some storage under here as well with a 12 volt socket. That's where I'm keeping my van true. Look, it's a dash cam. That's come in handy. I've caught some good stuff on this and I'll maybe show you a later date. There's also some storage under here as well. And I like this, the cup holders are very clever. Yes, they'll hold a cup of coffee. They're not too deep, but you press this button, look, 
little thing that holds it in place and there's a slightly thinner one for those narrow bottles so they don't fall over. Maybe they do fall over if you go like that with them, but hey, that's a little bit unfair. In terms of the seating position, there's loads of adjustment in it. You can really take the seat quite a way back. So if you've got dead long legs, you're gonna be fine. I can't even touch the pedals now, and you can jack the seat up quite high if you're short and you need to see out. And this car also has lots of adjustment in the steering wheel. That is quite a lot. It's easy to get comfy when you're driving, but what about if you're in the back seats? Yeah, well, let's go find out, shall we? Now, the rear doors do open fairly wide. That makes it easy to get in. And because the car is at that perfect height between a tall SUV and a normal hatchback, it's simple to just flop into position. And look at this, loads of knee room. Footwells are huge as well, which is great. Headroom, look, there's plenty of that as well. So people over six foot will be fine back here. If you need to carry three people at once, there isn't that much of a hump in the floor, so there's plenty of space for everyone's feet. Also, the car's wide enough to be able to fit three people in the back, and it's not too uncomfy, it's doable. If you want to carry a baby, well, it's that easy to maneuver a child seat into space. The problem is trying to locate the ice fix anchors because they're a little bit hidden between the seat cushions. That's the only problem. Now, if you have two child seats in the back, there isn't really much room between them to fit a person, so that is a slight problem if you need to carry three adults and two kids at the same time. Another thing that's a problem is the fact that, look, there is no charging facilities back here at all. That's annoying. The door bins as well in the back, they're kind of single serving. You can fit a bottle in them, but that's it, nothing else. Still, you do have some pockets on the seat backs which will hold an iPad or something like that. Also, I really like the fact that the rear windows are nice and large and they do go almost all the way down. So you can actually lean your elbow out there without resting it on the glass. Not so key on the fact that the coat hooks are there. It kind of gets in the way if you need to hang a coat in the back with people in the back at the same time. And the reading light, once again, it's a filament bulb, which isn't great. The position's good though for reading a book. I'm not so pleased about this though. Yes, you do have an armrest and some cup holders, but there's no through loading if you want to carry longer items and two people in the back. Hmm, that's not so great. But let's move on to the boot because that is quite impressive. So bizarrely, the boot on this E Nero is slightly larger than the normal Nero's by about five times this much, which is odd because usually it's the other way around because the batteries take up space. I don't know how they've done that. In fact, in total, you've got about 90 worth of these space in this car's boot, and it is a really good size. For instance, underneath the load cover, you can fit one large suitcase, one small suitcase, and two soft bags. Also, you can fit a baby buggy under there, and there's room for golf clubs and stuff. I like this look, though. The load cover, the way it's retractable, rather than a solid one like you get on most hatchbacks. Just get that out of the way. More on this later. There is a bit of a load lift, but it's not too bad, so you can just slide things straight over it like that. You do have a little bit more storage under here as well, and the space for the charging cable there. There's a few tie-down hooks if you need those. There's also, I was going to say a 12-volt socket. You get one on the normal Nero, but not here on the electric one. Probably just trying to save all the energy it can. Let's fold down the rear seats, and when you do that, as you can see, they're like, almost completely flat which makes it easy to slide things to the front like that and it won't slide back down again in fact with the seats down you can fit two large boxes across the back seats with a small box squeeze in between them then the space for an extra 12 more small boxes and two large suitcases yes this is a very practical car in fact you can fit a bike in there with both wheels attached you don't have to remove one of the wheels at all it's a very practical family car and it's emission free motoring too now then, it's time for the car wow five annoying things about this car. This car is designed to look a little bit like an SUV, but it doesn't have SUV style doors which cover the sticky outy side skirts, which means that when you've been driving in bad weather, they're gonna get covered in filth. And then when you get out, you'll rub your trouser legs on them and then you'll have filth on your trousers. The car's manual is so freaking big, it's almost as big a read as the Bible and then there's a second one for the navigation system, which is in almost all the languages under the sun. And when you put them both in the glove box, it's pretty much full. The brakes make this weird groaning sound when you're just creeping along in traffic. This car makes so many beeps and bongs. It's, it kind of reminds me of a Game Boy from the 1990s. 
think Super Mario is just going to jump on top of the car and squish it. It even does it when you turn it off and on. And rather appropriately, the definition of the screen for the reversing camera looks like it's from a 1990s Game Boy as well. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. Here's five. The car emits a futuristic noise from the front to warn pedestrians so they can hear it coming because obviously it's silent being an electric car. However, you can turn it off if you want to go around running people over. Ah! The Nero has some unique features for its infotainment system. For instance, you can set your planned departure time and it will preheat the cabin so it's nice and toasty for when you are ready to leave. Also, the satellite navigation system shows you a range you have with the amount of charge in the battery. And when you're driving along, you can tell when you're approaching a junction or maybe going down a hill, and it'll give you a little warning in the driver's digital display to lift off the accelerator to help conserve fuel. Also, the car will log how much carbon dioxide you've saved by driving this EV compared to a normal internal combustion engine car of the same size. There are some changes to the bodywork over the normal Nero to help make this car a bit more aerodynamic. So, for instance, there is no grill because there is no engine that needs cooling. Also, the Allo World designs have less drag, that improves efficiency. As to the shape of the windscreen wipers, once again, improve the airflow and reduce the drag. And it's the same story with the door mirrors, all specifically designed to maximise how far you can go on a full battery. I just can't express how much I love the fact that, look, you can fit the low cover underneath the boot floor. Ah! Sorry, it's a nervous tick. Being okay, you get a seven year, 100,000 mile warranty. Though doing 100,000 miles in an electric car, what with all the charging, could take you a while, probably longer than seven years. There's only one version of the E-Nero, and it has a 200 horsepower electric motor and a load of batteries. There's actually almost half a ton of batteries. 294 cells in total, if you want to charge it, using a normal three-pin socket that you'd have at home. One of these. It's going to take you 29 hours, so don't do that. If you have a fast AC charger, it'll take about 10 hours. However, you want to charge it up from a DC charger, a rapid charger. You can charge it from empty to 80% full in just one hour, 15 minutes. So that's going to be the best way to charge this car. Being in an electric car, the Kia E-Nero is really nice to drive in town. So when you poot along, it's just silent because you haven't got the rattle of a diesel or a petrol engine. And then when you put your foot down, you get instant response from that electric motor that, oh, that was a little bit over the limit there. And so it's great for just nipping through gaps in traffic. As for speed humps, it deals with them pretty well. One of the things about electric cars is that they are quite heavy because they have to carry around a lot of batteries. As a result, they're usually fitted with quite firm suspension to stop them leaning too much in the bends. And that means when you get on a broken road or you're driving over little bumps, you do get this sensation of them just like bobbing about a little bit. And yes, this E-Nero does that a touch. It's nowhere near as bad as a Nissan Leaf, but this thing doesn't glide at the road quite as well as a Toyota RAV4 hybrid does. Now, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of the Toyota RAV4, then just click up there on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen. One of the things about electric cars is that when you lift off the accelerator, the motor then works in reverse, and actually, the wheels turn to then drive the motor, which puts charge back into the battery, and that creates a slowing effect. And in this car, you can actually alter the severity of the slowing effect by pulling on this pedal to have it maximum, or the other pedal to make it minimum. Have it as you like it. I actually like it at maximum because then you can control the car on the throttle. You don't really have to use the brakes that much at all. And that's kind of good in a way because at slower speeds, the brakes can feel a little bit grabby. Right, let's see how easy it is to park this car. So I'm going to rely heavily on the camera and sensors. The door mirrors aren't the biggest and they don't tilt down, so they could be a bit better. Visibility towards the front, it's okay. You get a bit of a blind spot there. The worst bit is at the back because the rear pillar is quite thick. So this is going to take a few goes. What I can't complain about is the steering though, super light. So it does mean that if you have to do quite a few manoeuvres like I'm doing now, it ain't too bad. But I think I did that actually all right. Bravo. Tell you what I also like, the gear selector. So it's dead easy to just flick it from reverse into drive. 
Anyway, let's get on with the final town test. Let's see how manoeuvrable this car is. So here's a mini roundabout. Can I do a U-turn without, hey, someone almost crashing into me. <laughs> oh God. Well, I can do a U-turn, no problem at all, because this thing has a really tight turning circle. It's better than a Volkswagen EGOV and about the same as a Nissan Leaf. Dead manoeuvrable, easy to weave about through town. <sighs> that was a close call. The e-Nero is pretty relaxing on the motorway. Obviously, you haven't got an engine droning on, so your ears then pick up other noises, such as road noise, which seems a little bit more than in something like a Volkswagen e-Golf. Still, the range in this car is way, way better than the VW. It will do about 250 miles between charges, which is pretty impressive. As for the comfort, goes over bumps well when you're going quickly. The seats though feel a little bit overly firm and not that supportive so I don't know how many miles I could do in these. What I do like about it though is the overtaking power so once again the instant response from the electric motor I'm doing 50 miles an hour and I floor it add 60 and that is 70. That is quick. Now it's time to find out what the e-Nero is like on a twisty road. Now electric cars don't tend to be that great round fast sweeping beds because they're quite heavy because they're having to lug about all the batteries but this is all right it doesn't lean too much so you're not going to get car sick and the steering feels quite precise that's good the only thing that's perhaps not good is that when you go into a corner quite slowly and if you suddenly accelerate then if you heard that that's the front wheels just suddenly spinning and losing grip because you've got instant power from the electric motor also, if the surface is a little bit rough when you're accelerating while turning, you can feel the steering wheel like tugging like that. And there's no way this car is as fun to drive or as sporty feeling as a Jaguar I-Pace. And if you click up there on the pop out around the top right hand corner of the screen, you can see my full in-depth video review of that car. So then, what's my final verdict on the Kia e-Nero? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the Kia Nero. It might not be the most futuristic looking EV, but it's a really good electric car. Do you agree with my verdict? Let me know in the comments section. Also, please subscribe to this channel for more videos. And if you click on the deals box to the right, you can see how much you can save on a new car at CarWow. Or click on the video windows below to watch another of my videos.